This week we've seen a new DLC. We've seen rumors of yet more DLC. Rumors of the creation kit. And of course, lots more mods. Welcome to episode 21 of the Fallout 4 Mod Vault. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to welcome back an old friend from the New Vegas Strip. That's right, say hello to the Securitron. With a mod called Securitron Automatron, you can recreate the Securitron from Fallout New Vegas on any of your robots. The process is no different to creating any of the other robot types. You just select the torso for Securitron and you will find that the head option has disappeared and you can change the legs to the Securiton tire. Now you've probably already noticed that you can still mix and match. So for example, you can have the Securitron tire and maybe the Mr. Handy or Assaultron torso if you so choose. And then of course I can have the, let's go for the Protectron head. You can do the same as you do with all of the other robots and they will work just fine if look a little strange. Although, let's face it, many of the creations you uh, come up with with this particular station are a little strange. And of course you can do the other way around. You can have the Securitron um, torso and the legs of your choice, including the Mr. Handy thrusters, which do look kind of cool actually. The Securitron tire doesn't seem to actually have any mods that go with it. However, the torso does. You can change the front armor and if you want to have the face of Yes Man or various other things, you can. Uh, you can also have some fairly terrifying looking armor if you prefer that instead. I would like to see an option that would allow me to have some of these more terrifying armor pieces and have the face on the screen, but currently it does seem to be either or. You can have a face or you can have armor. But don't worry, you can paint your Securitron whatever color you so desire. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. If you've ever dreamed of becoming your own version of Mr. House and owning a Securitron robot army of doom, you now can. And you can even have it in pink. One of the really annoying thing about setting down turrets in settlements is the fact that they come randomized. Uh, for those of you that don't know and have never been annoyed by this before, if you actually go backwards and forwards between your turrets, they change mark. You can see we've got a mark one now. Now it's a mark five. Mark five again, mark one, and it will just rotate through giving you various different marks, one, three, five, and seven. And if you've never noticed that before, it's probably never annoyed you, but now it will. Um, so you're welcome, um, because this has been something that's annoyed me nonstop. On some settlements, the seven turret is actually quite hard to get it. It can take 30 or 40 different tries to get it. And if you want the maximum oomph, the maximum amount of damage and who the hell doesn't, you end up doing that. Well, with a mod called No More Random Turrets, it just makes it so that you always get the maximum mark turret. So, for example, here in Nordhagen Beach, I will always get Mark 7s, Tempines Bluff, it's Mark 3s, but here in Sanctuary, I'm limited to Mark 1s. Now, not everyone is going to want to force it to the maximum mark because believe it or not, there are some reasons why you might want to drop to a lower turret. The turrets are subtly different. The Mark I is the basic machine gun. The Mark III uh, shoots explosive rounds. The Mark V uses incendiary rounds and the Mark VII once again switches back to explosives. Yeah, they are tougher the higher the level, but they're also different. And some people are going to want a mix, a range of turrets. But 
For many of us, we just go for the strongest turrets. I always do. I use the sevens if I have the chance. I just like the toughest and the best. However, it might be nice to see a mod like this that instead of just random, uh, removing the random element, actually gives you an option for each turret. So in this particular place, I have access to all four types. So maybe I could have four machine gun turret types and four heavy machine gun turret types. Just an idea. However, for people who always want the maximum mark turret and are willing to go back and forth between the different options until they get it, this mod will save a lot of time and frustration. I have recently spent quite a lot of time settlement building and one of the things that I did notice was that I was having a little difficulty getting the shops looking the way I wanted them to look. There were a few things that were bugging me. Specifically, the first thing was that they look very empty. These guys have got loads of stock and yet nothing is showing on the stall and it just looked boring. So I looked around and found a mod called Immersive Vendors and it immediately made such a huge difference. All of the vendors started to look a lot more inviting, more interesting, which is, let's face it, half the battle when it comes to running a shop. I found myself actually wanting to look at the produce that was on the shelves as though I were window shopping and perhaps wanting to try the odd free sample. The mod changes all of the traders, including the first tier and second tier, as you can see. They are much more interesting to look at, but it adds three versions of the third tier of vendor for each of the sections, actually. And what I really loved about this was not only is it far more pleasant to look at, I will actually make one of each for you to see. Not only is it more pleasant to look at, but you have some options with regards the roof. And this can be quite important, as you can see, a completely clear roof with a sign below, the standard roof, and a roof with some sort of ornament on it. This is not just useful because more variety is always good, it actually allows you to place these things underneath roofs a lot easier without having to worry about clipping. Uh, you'd never had this problem really with the tier ones. They kind of fit under most standard size roofs, but the tier threes don't. You can fit them, but they, they look pretty bad. But with this mod, you have an option that will actually allow you to build great looking shops underneath roofs. I'm pretty late to the party where this mod is concerned, but now that I'm spending more time doing settlement building, I really do feel this mod is going to be one of my must-have mods. It makes the place look so much more interesting and it gives me a few more options on how to set my shops up. A lot of the headgear, especially the face gear in Fallout 4, seems a little underwhelming to me. Take the gas mask, for example. This device actually looks like it should be extremely useful in a post-apocalyptic survival game. And yet, honestly, I take my patrolman sunglasses any day of the week. They give me one perception, whereas the gas mask gives you one damage reduction and 15 radiation resistance, which is not really that much. And of course, a lot of the headgear is just totally unmoddable. You cannot improve it. But with a mod called Gas Mask Upgrades, that is no longer a problem. You can now add armor upgrades and modifications to gas masks. This includes being able to increase both damage resistance and energy resistance. Uh, not by much. At the max rank, rank 4 of armor, you can increase it to 6 damage resistance and 3 energy resistance, which is not huge, but it's enough to give it an advantage over something like sunglasses. It makes up for the one perception difference. And of course, with the, with the filter option, you can improve 
the radiation resistance. Now you actually have some options on this. You can use some stronger versions that give you even more radiation resistance per perk rank, uh, but I've chosen the basic one. I think this is more than enough. You can have up to 65 radiation resistance, which really does give you a very good reason to use this gas mask. It also gives poison resistance, as you can see, which is perfectly reasonable. The rebreather option also adds the option to breathe underwater if you want that. These options can be applied to the gas mask with goggles, the assault gas mask, and even the helmeted cage armor. Of course, this brings up a whole new issue of why the hell can I not upgrade most of the armors anyway? Things like helmeted cage armor should have been moddable from the start and in fact should have mod slots for heads as well as for the main body. So if you like this aesthetic and you want to see some actual benefits to wearing such devices, such armor, then this mod is definitely going to be for you. And finally, I hope you don't mind if I indulge myself in more ways than one in this case by showing you the mod Jack's Whiskey. Not only does this bottle of whiskey have our beloved, um, well, I was going to say hero, but that really would be a bad term, wouldn't it? Our, um, our friend Jack here on the label, it gives us two strength, minus one to our intelligence, and... 25 damage resistance. That's right, you will actually become tougher when you drink Jack's Whiskey. To make Jack's Whiskey, you are going to need whiskey, obviously, cloth, and crystal. You are also going to need rank one in gun nut. And if you're scratching your head as to why, it's kind of a long story. The short version is, Jack is my Fallout New Vegas character, and he has, well, he has many character flaws. Let's, let's just put it that way. He is a gunsmith who is the son of a gunsmith, and he does enjoy his whiskey. And so, this is the drink of choice for alcoholic gun nuts. If you are curious, uh, I will leave a link down to a video covering the Fallout New Vegas version of this particular mod which will give you a little insight into that character without forcing you to watch my entire Let's Play. And I would just like to thank Mac777 for bringing this to Fallout 4. It made me smile, so thank you for that. And that is all we have time for this week. It has been a very, very busy week for me, and the next few weeks are probably going to be even busier for reasons that I will tell you about sometime in the near future. A big thank you to everybody who has posted images for me to use at the end of my videos. I do appreciate it, as I always say, and will continue to say. If you would like to contribute an image for me to use, I will leave a link down below that will take you to a video, and it will show you exactly how you can do that. I will be back next week with more great mods to show you, and I would love it if you could join me for that. And until then, remember, as always, have fun. If you're curious as to whether I've covered a mod in one of my videos, feel free to go along to my website, gophersvids.com, and check the search functionality out. Just type the name of the mod you're interested in, open up the settings, and filter by mods only. Click for search, and you will see whether or not I've covered that mod. Click on the mod, and it will also show you any of the videos this mod appears in.